Hello again, everybody. It's Dirk uh, cruising along Interstate 80, heading eastbound. We're uh, heading in from the Sterling Distribution Center. Um, got uh, two stores to hit with this trailer, um, south side of Chicago. So that should be fun. Uh, I've been to both of these stores before. Uh, one of them is, is fairly straightforward, not, not terribly difficult. The other one uh, is one of the trickier ones. It's a little neighborhood market store uh, on the south side of Chicago, right by Ashland and Cicero. Um, anybody familiar with that area, uh, you know it's that, that's tight city streets there. Uh, rather difficult place to maneuver uh, in a car, let alone a <laughs> over the road uh, sleeper cab semi truck that's 72 plus feet long. Uh, but hey, I've been in there a few times. I've been able to make it work, so uh, today should be no different. Uh, I do plan on trying to get that on camera uh, so that you guys can see uh, what it's like to drive one of these monsters um, in, in, city, in city streets, in small little city streets with drivers that don't want to let you in and you know, all of that good stuff. The, you know, the reason why a lot of truck drivers will just absolutely panic uh, when they hear that they've been dispatched into a city uh, and some will outright refuse to go. Uh, but anyway, uh, as I'm cruising along here, um, I've got quite a ways to go before I start hit, hitting uh, quote-unquote civilization. Uh, uh, and I don't mean that as an insult or a, or a slight. Uh, I absolutely love the country out here. Uh, it's absolutely breathtaking, gorgeous. Uh, I love driving out here, uh, but we are quite a ways out. Um, so uh, we're quite a ways out west of the city, so we got a long way to go in. Um, but as I'm driving along, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, you know, I've made a whole bunch of observations during the time that I've been driving uh, the semi-truck. And uh, I guess, you know, I just wanted to talk about some of the stuff. Um, specifically, I think, there's kind of a, a, well, I don't think I know, there's, there's, a, there's really a disconnect of knowledge uh, between the truck drivers, the trucking industry, um, and uh, the general public driving, you know, what, what the trucking folks like to call four-wheelers. Uh, we've talked about that before, you know, four-wheelers is a reference to, you know, basically any kind of a passenger-type vehicle. Um, so that includes pickup trucks and all the rest of it. Um, and they don't necessarily always have four wheels, but again, we've been through that. Uh, but four wheelers, kind of generally the general public. And I think one of the things that, that's missing uh, and, and is actually a component of trying to make the highways safer uh, is that you know when people get their license, uh, they have to have some sort of an education to get their driver's license, albeit not nothing compared to getting a commercial driver's license, but still, you know, all of us went to some sort of a school, you know, back, back in the day when we were young and to get our first driver's license. I know I had it in high school. Uh, I had driver's education in high school. Um, and as I remember back on that, um, our driver's ed course was actually pretty good. The guy, the, the teacher that I had, uh, he was a real stickler for details. And he actually did, uh, I do remember, he actually did talk rather extensively about trucks and, and how to be aware of trucks and and you know how to you know keep yourself safe around them and not to cut them off and not to get too close and don't sit on their side and, and all of those things and I remember that actually as a teenager uh, but I have a, a very strong feeling that that's that's unusual I don't think a lot of uh, uh, driving education places really cover it and, and you see it in just the way people drive. Um, they are so completely oblivious to the realities uh, of the trucks around them and the dangers they're putting themselves in. Uh, being, you know, doing stupid things around trucks. And, uh, you know, I remember back when I was a kid, you know, growing up, the trucks used to always be in the right lane. So if you were on a highway that, um, you know, had Three or more lanes, as an example. Um, if you have three or four, three or four, or sometimes five lanes of traffic on a highway. When I was a teenager and when I was a kid, you know, the trucks pretty much stayed in the farthest right lane. And 
they did that because you know they were the slowest vehicles on the road and you know it made sense but there was something very important that made a big difference between then and now now what you'll see is a lot of a, a, a good majority of truck drivers when they get into especially metro areas uh, when the roads start having three or four lanes they will get in the second lane from the right uh, and that usually ends up being the truck lane, you know, the second one from the right. And the reason that they're doing that is not to piss car drivers off and not to block the road and, you know, whatever else some, you know, less than uh, <laughs> well-educated car drivers may think. The reason that they're doing that is because people have forgotten or are completely oblivious to how to properly merge onto and how to properly exit from a highway. And I've been really, really painfully aware of it driving a truck uh, because you will see people come down the long on-ramp. Now that long on-ramp is long because it was designed to allow you to use the engine under your hood and speed your four-wheeler up to the flow of traffic speed before you try to merge in. But time and time again, you see these people, the flow of traffic is doing 65, 70 miles per hour, and they come sauntering along up the on-ramp doing 45 miles per hour and pushing their way in. And even worse, not only are they pushing their way into the right lane, they're quickly going into the middle lane and even the left lane, and they haven't even broke 55 yet there's traffic coming behind them at 70 plus. It is absolutely astounding how oblivious some of these people are. But that is the current reality. I, and, and I have to imagine that, that these people just don't know any better, maybe, or, or maybe they just don't care. I don't, I don't understand. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if I was a state highway patrolman, I think you know, if I see somebody do that, I'm pulling them over for reckless driving and, and, and in public endangerment. I mean, that's how you cause accidents. Um, but, you know, so that's one major, major reason. Back in the day, like I mentioned, when trucks used to stay in the right lane, you know, I remember being in the car with my folks, you know, when we were kids. And you didn't see that. I don't remember ever seeing stuff like that. When my dad got on a highway, he floored it. You know, we're talking about, you know, <laughs> a, a 67 Pontiac Catalina with a 400 cubic inch engine. I mean, that thing of all ass. Uh, you know, he would floor it and he would be at, you know, 70 miles per hour by the time he was marching on. And that's what people did. You know, they, they, they knew that they didn't want to interrupt the flow of the highway. So they timed their speed accordingly so that they could get either ahead or behind of the vehicle that's currently in the right lane. That's the way it's supposed to work. That's the way logic would tell you that's how it works. But that's not what happens now. So that's why you'll see all these trucks in the second to left lane. Because if you drive in the right lane, you are constantly going to be slowing down and speeding up and slowing down and speeding up. And in a semi-truck, you know, that weighs anywhere from, you know, 60 to 80,000 pounds, um, that's burning a lot of fuel. These trucks take quite a bit of energy to get up to cruising speed. And once you get a semi-truck up to cruising speed, that's where you want to keep it. You do not want to keep having to slow down and speed up again. That's how you burn all your fuel. Um, so not only is it um, a cost savings thing, it's also damn dangerous. You know, if we have to hit our brakes hard, um, you know, that's a dangerous situation. Trucks should not ever have to hit their brakes hard. And if they do, somebody is really messing up. Uh, whether that be the truck driver following too close or doing something he shouldn't be doing or she shouldn't be doing or more often than not because a four-wheeler is being oblivious and doing something that is putting people in danger. Um, so so that's number one, the merging and the exiting, you know, people exiting the highway. That's another thing. You know, they'll, they'll start slowing down a half a mile to a quarter of a mile before they're offering. It's like, people, you have a car. It will slow down in the space of the ramp. You don't have to start slowing down before you exit. Now, semi-trucks, depending on the length of the off-ramp, 
semi trucks often do have to start slowing down before they exit. But that, again, you're talking about a potentially 80,000 pound, 72 foot long vehicle. Yeah, it's a gigantic, it's like the freaking Titanic on the highway. Yes, it has a ton of momentum. You gotta slow the thing down. But cars, come on, you don't have to do that. And so many people do it. And in the meantime, if you're the unfortunate truck driver, who is driving along in that right lane, guess what? Now you're having to slow down too. So that's incredibly annoying uh, to try and try and drive behind. Um, the other thing I've noticed is you'll get these people that, I mean, they, they just haven't a care in the world. You know, they'll merge on and they'll be almost up to highway speed. And you know, you're still a good half a mile to a mile behind them. So you figure, okay, I'm just going to hold this lane because they're already merging in and, you know, they'll, they've got more than enough time to get up to highway speed. But guess what? They sit there and they coast along doing, you know, three to seven to ten miles per hour under the flow of traffic, under the speed limit, and they do that for the next half a mile to a mile before they eventually start speeding up. So what that means for the truck driver is that now you have to slow down because you know damn well if you move over to the left to go ahead and start trying to pass them they're going to start pacing you and speeding up and now you're stuck in the left lane um, so yeah those people are absolutely as annoying as the people that are merging on way too slow um, and you know the other thing i think the general public doesn't know um, is that all of these modern trucks, certainly the modern trucks that um, are part of the fleets of these big companies, um, you know, the Schneiders, the Swift, um, the Werner, CR England, all these big trucking companies, and a lot of the mid-sized companies, and even some of the smaller companies, um, they have what they call adaptive cruise control on these trucks. Um, the truck I'm driving has adaptive cruise control. And along with adaptive there's a whole bunch of other safety features that it comes with. Um, and essentially what it boils down to is that the truck has radars. Um, it has radar systems on the front. It has a radar system on either side. And what that system does is monitors in real time everything going on with that truck. So for an example right now, um, I've got it on the camera for you. Uh, or I'm going to put it on the camera for you. I'm going to, uh, to videotape, or videotape the actual display panel for the system in this truck. Now there's, there's different types of systems, uh, but they're all very similar in what they do. Um, to start with, you have the two side sensors. And what they do is they're continually watching the lane marker lines. So they're watching right now, they're watching the solid white line on the right side, and they're watching the dotted center line. And what they do is that if I start drifting, because I'm not paying attention, and drifting is very easy to do in a semi-truck, you, you figure that out the first day you start driving one. Uh, and I don't know why it is necessarily, maybe it's just because of the size and the weight, uh, but the steer tires on a semi-truck, they seem to kind of uh, settle into wherever the groove of the road is. Um, and, you know, they, they you have to constantly pay attention um, and constantly counter steer a semi truck because they tend to wander. Maybe some of that has to do with wind. Some of you know, I don't know, um, but I just know how it feels. And uh, you know, you can't, you cannot stop paying attention for even a few seconds because you'll be wandering out of your lane. Um, so it's a very active thing to keep a semi truck solidly in the center of your lane. And uh, as you drive on the highway, you've probably seen lots of times where a truck starts slowly drifting off the shoulder or whatever. You know, that's because these, that person has taken their eyes off the road for just a second or two, and they look up and they're, and they're already running off the road. So it's a very active uh, thing to, to drive and steer one of these trucks. Uh, but anyway, back to the sensor. If, uh, if you start encroaching on either side, what it does is it will give you a horrible sound in either the left or the right side speaker of the, of the stereo system in the truck. And uh, it's kind of like, I guess, to mimic a rumble strip. Um, but it's very loud. You cannot miss it. 
um, and it's letting you know um, where you are going too far up the road. Now, as I creep over to this right side, you're gonna hear the right-hand speaker. Um, it'll start going off, right there. And until you get back in center, it won't stop. Um, so believe me, you know when you're drifting. Um, that's a, it's a horrible sound. Um, so anyway, that's part of the radar system, which, you know, as annoying as that sound is, it's a fantastic system as far as safety, because if you ever nod off or, or you know, you're tired and, you know, your fatigue is hitting you or something, you start wandering, if you start hearing those things going off and going off, it means, you know what, it doesn't matter how you think you feel, you need to pull over and park, uh, because you're wandering um, and you're fatigued. So I think it's a fabulous system um, in that respect. The next thing, and, and probably the most important part of the whole system, you know, not only is it adaptive cruise control, it's also a collision avoidance, a collision, a collision mitigation system. So it is actively tied in not only to the cruise control, but it is also actively tied into the air brakes of the truck. So if somebody pulls in front of you, for an example, and your cruise control is set at 65, right now my cruise control is set at 65, and I'm gonna pop up the screen, and you can see on the left-hand side, it says set 65 miles per hour, that's me. That's the speed I'm set at. And see the guy out in front of me, see him wandering? There you go, he wasn't paying attention, or she uh, wasn't watching, and off they went, they just started drifting. Um, it happens to all of us. Uh, at some point, you know, you, you get distracted by something and you start drifting. Um, but anyway, back to the speed. The truck ahead of me, you can see right now, is going uphill, it's probably heavy, and he's slowing down to 63, 64. Um, so that's the first thing that that radar in the front of the truck is doing. It is watching the exact real-time speed of the vehicle in front of you, which is an incredibly handy thing uh, to know. As a matter of fact, I get a chuckle every time I go home for home time and I get in my personal car and I jump on the highway and I, you know, I set the cruise control and I'm waiting for the, for the adaptive cruise to start <laughs> kicking in and, and, and slowing me down or speeding me up and it doesn't, you know, and I'm looking over on the dashboard, wait, how fast is that guy going? And I'm looking at the dashboard, there's nothing there. It's like, oh shit, I don't have my radar. Uh, you get very used to having it. You, you end up looking at it and using it quite a bit. Um, but anyway, so now I know how fast this guy ahead of me is going. So even though my cruise control is set at 65 miles per hour, the guy ahead of me is, you know, fluctuating between 63 and 64 miles per hour. So guess what that's doing? it is making my speed at the moment 64 miles per hour because that system wants to keep a minimum safety distance between me and that vehicle ahead of me. And depending on the speed I'm traveling and depending on the uh, straightness or curviness of the road, it's going to calculate and determine what a safe minimum following distance should be. And in this case, it's 338 feet. You can see that on the upper right. So I'm 338 feet, 341 feet uh, behind that flatbed ahead of me, and I'm just going to match his speed, and I'm going to keep that distance for as long as I stay behind this guy. Um, so it's it's a very handy thing to have, um, and it's especially handy when you come up on somebody in the, on the in the right lane, and, and you're coming up on a truck ahead of you, and you can see already you're doing 65, and the radar is telling you they're doing 58. Uh, you know right away you need to go over to the left uh, and get past that person. Otherwise, the adaptive cruise is going to start slowing your truck down. Um, and, it, and when you first, when I first got the truck, uh, and I was you know, brand new to it, and I'd never driven a, a semi truck, let alone something with adaptive cruise control, um, it kept it kept tricking me. Like, and not so much tricking me, but it kept doing that. It would it would I would get behind somebody driving slower, and I wouldn't notice it. And all of a sudden, I'd be tailing this person for, you know, mile after mile after mile, and all of a sudden it would dawn me, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm going a lot slower than I thought. And I look at my speedometer, I'm doing like 58, and I'm set at 65, and it's like, damn it, I didn't notice that I had crept up, you know, behind somebody going a lot slower. Um, and I didn't even notice it. Um, so that's one of the downsides of adaptive cruise control. That is, until you actually get used to it, 
uh, and then you begin to actively use it, and you actually use it as the tool it's designed to be. Um, but the other important thing about that adaptive cruise control uh, that I wish more four-wheelers knew is that that zone ahead of the truck, that 300 and some odd feet between me and that truck ahead of me at the moment, that zone, if somebody changes lanes into that zone, if that little black Acura decided to come past me and you know turn on their right signal and then you know cut short ahead of me, even though um, you know let's say they're going about my speed, if they did that, what might happen? is they get in the field of range of that radar and the radar notices there's an object much closer than is safe, the truck will actually apply the brakes. Without me doing it, the truck will actually hit the brakes. And that's, on the one hand, I understand why they design it that way as a, you know, as a, as a worst case scenario if the driver is not paying attention truck will apply the brakes before somebody gets hit and killed. So I get the concept. The flip side of that, however, is that it does pose a danger within itself. Because if you are paying attention and you're not when you're not ready for that, that truck all of a sudden is putting on the brakes where you as the driver definitely don't want it to. So you have to be super aware and super ready uh, if that truck slams, but you have to be on the throttle. You have to hit the throttle in order to to stop the truck from doing that, or you have to hit the brakes before it does. I usually choose the latter. Um, I anticipate what's happening, and I'm already touching my brakes lightly uh, and beginning to squeeze them harder if I need to. But I'm doing that in anticipation. Not necessarily because I think I need to, because if I didn't have that collision mitigation system, I probably wouldn't, because there would be no need for it. I know what's happening, I can see it in real time, um, and, and braking in that, in that situation might be overkill, uh, and I wouldn't necessarily do it, but knowing that the truck is about to, I'd rather do it before the truck does. So I will go ahead and start applying the brakes. Anyway, um, the point of that is that, you know, with these systems on these trucks, um, you know, the cars and four-wheelers that are maneuvering around us, I just wish they were more aware of them um, because they, they, they can really mess us up <laughs> as far as, you know, consistency of our role, you know, they're, we're constantly having to speed up and slow down because, you know, cars just don't know any better. You know, they, they change lanes in front of our nose uh, instead of waiting for a little bit um, and then, you know, coming over uh, when they're a farther distance from us so that it doesn't trigger our systems. Um, that brings me to another thing that I see uh, every now and then, which is probably the single most deadly thing I see four-wheelers do. And, and thankfully, I don't see it that often. Uh, but I have seen it on several occasions, and every single time, I just wish I could pull that person to the side and talk to them, uh, and not talk to them to like scream at them or call them stupid or anything like that, but just to make them aware of how deadly what they just did is. And that is when you have a truck passing another truck on the highway, and you're in your car and you're behind it, Yes, now you're in the left lane, it sucks. You're stuck behind that truck. See, my collision avoidance was starting to beep at me to let me know I need to brake harder because I'm coming up on that truck too fast. Um, so you just heard part of the system in action right there. Um, anyway, yeah, it sucks. Now you have to wait, and you have to wait, and you have to wait. And then finally that truck in the left lane is past that truck in the right lane, and you're thinking, okay, Come on, get over, pull over to the right so I can get past you because you know I'm in a hurry and I'm important. Yeah, and he's not getting over fast enough. Well, guess what? The reason why he's not getting over fast enough is because truck drivers know that in order to be safe, trucks need to have distance. And we know 
that cutting in front, tight in front of another truck is just a really stupid thing to do. Not only is it stupid, it's rude. So we wait, we get out ahead and not, not till we're 10 feet ahead. We want to have at least a, a minimum, a minimum, minimum, minimum full truck length uh, before we turn back into the right lane. Preferably two or three truck lengths um, before we switch lanes ahead of that truck um, that we're just past. Because we know it probably has the collision avoidance system on the truck, and as we turn into them, it, it, you know, it might trigger his brakes. Um, and it's also, again, the farther we can keep ourselves apart, these big rolling behemoths, the safer everybody is on the highway. But invariably, you'll have somebody who's super entitled, or super in a hurry, or just super clueless, and they just don't know and they will go ahead and try to pass that vehicle that's in the left lane, that truck. They will try to scoot in behind him into the right lane and pass him on the right side before he can get over. People, that is the stupidest, most deadly move you can make as a driver. That is absolutely suicidal, and I'll tell you why. Because a lot of times, even though we are trained to constantly be aware of our surroundings, constantly check our mirrors. That area on the right-hand side, on the curb side of the truck, there are a lot of blind spots there. And if that driver just happens to not check his mirror at the right time, you disappear into a blind spot and they don't know you're there. And if they, at that moment, that they can't see you, if that exact moment is when they decide to pull their vehicle into that right lane, you will be crushed. You will be crushed instantly and killed. There is no surviving that. That truck will roll right over the top of you and will decapitate you before smashing you into a pancake. And if that's the way you wish to die, uh, let me tell you, that's really not a nice thing for your family. You will not be having an open casket funeral. I guarantee you that. Do not do that for any reason. It is never, ever safe to pass a truck on the right-hand side. I will say it again. Please, please, for the love of God, people, do not pass a truck on the right-hand side ever for any reason. So, now that I got that off my chest, um, the next deadly thing, these, these are the two most deadly things I see people do. Now, the first one was four-wheelers passing a truck on the right or sneaking in on the right side before the truck can get back. That is absolutely the worst thing you can do. The other one, the other uh, award for the most deadly thing you could possibly do goes to actual truck drivers, I'm afraid. Um, and I have to assume that these truck drivers that are doing it are owner-operators, unfortunately, um, at least the vast majority of them, or they work for trucking companies that are so small uh, that they don't have adaptive crews or, you know, collision mitigation systems, um, because if they did, they wouldn't be able to do it. Um, their truck would be hitting the brakes long before they could do it, but it is tailgating. And I do a lot of driving around the Chicago metropolitan area. Um, and I'm telling you, I see it so often. It just, it, 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 it baffles me how these guys can keep their CDL. Um, trucks tailgating people. That is the most irresponsible, stupidest thing you could possibly do as a semi-truck driver. In my opinion, I have a very strong opinion if you haven't figured it out. If you get caught tailgating somebody in a semi-truck, I personally think you should have your CDL revoked, period, on the spot. You should not ever drive a commercial vehicle again. And yeah, that's harsh. Yeah, it is. Because you're going to kill somebody. I see it all the time. And it's always these owner ops, and it's 
usually these guys in their you know 1986 Volvo that's held together with duct tape, um, you know, and they're from some Eastern European country or something, uh, and they've got you know Volvo plastered all over the front and sides of their truck, and here they are on the highway driving a foot and a half off of the back bumper of a minivan with kids in it. I'm not exaggerating. I see this shit all the time. And every time I see it, I wish to God there was a cop. And I wish to God that cop would pull that person over. And I wish the laws pertaining to that violation would take the CDL away from that person for good. I mean, or having to go through some incredibly lengthy, expensive as hell remedial training before you ever hope to get your CDL back. I think it should be that severe because that is the most deadly thing you could possibly do with one of these trucks. Tailgating something, I don't get it. Anyway, um, enough about that. I just, uh, again, these are the things that were just kind of going through my head as I'm driving along, you know, just observations I'm making. Uh, you know, I'm always kind of watching out, trying to see, you know, I'm trying to learn, you know, I'm trying to pay attention to everything I'm seeing around me and, and seeing, you know, maybe where the industry needs a little bit of help too from a, you know, a higher level perspective. Uh, and that, that thing about tailgating, it's a perfect example. Uh, maybe I'll uh, send a, a, a letter over to Pete Buttigieg, who's our transportation secretary now, um, you know, and, and bounce the idea off of him. I'm not kidding. And maybe I'll make a whole lot of enemies, but you know what? I don't care. Uh, if it saves some lives and gets people that shouldn't be driving commercial vehicles off the road, so be it. You know, if you're driving the way you're supposed to and you're driving as a safe person and you're protecting the roads the way truck drivers should, you know, when I was coming up, when I was a kid, that was what truck drivers were known as. Uh, they were the they were the good guys of the highway. Um, you know, if you got a flat tire, it was always a truck driver that would stop and help you fix your flat. Uh, you know, they were the knights of the highway kind of a thing. You know, and and the watchers of the highway. And that's what we should still should be. We should be trying to make the roads safe. We shouldn't be actively involved in making them a killing field. If that minivan with the kids in the back seat has to hit their brakes, I'm sorry, Mr. Volvo driver, you're gonna pancake a family. And, and you know, have that on your conscience if you have one. I mean, yeah, anyway, I'll stop ranting about that. Um, as I said, I'm gonna be hitting these stores uh, in Chicago. That one on Ashland Avenue, I'm gonna see if I can set up the cameras. It all depends on the traffic, uh, if there's a space, safe spot for me to do that. Um, I hope I can, um, but we'll find out. If not, this will be it. But I did want to show you that radar system. Um, it's pretty cool if you've been watching it. I've just kind of had it on there just so you can see it in operation. Um, very cool thing to have. Um, I think cars should probably have that too. I think that would be kind of cool. Actually, some of them I think do. Anyway, enough of my babbling. Talk to you later.